The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are two different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. Alrighty, so today we're gonna go on and cover section 7.6 but first we had a request for a problem. This is from section 7.5, number 11. It says, simplify the complex fraction. And we have y over x plus seven y, all over y plus, 6y over x. So the least common denominator is x. So we're going to multiply by x over 1 all over x over 1. And distributing, we get, let's see, we get x, y over x times x over 1 plus 7y times x over 1. In the denominator, y times x over 1 plus 6y over x times x over 1. When we go back and simplify each thing, let's see, that would cross out and we would have what? y. And then uh, let's see, plus. 7xy all over yx plus, let's see here, those would reduce out all over 6y. Now, this is what the student had for their final answer. So far, so good. However, we can factor a y out of the numerator and a y out of the denominator. And then our common factor of a y reduces out and we get one plus seven x over x plus six. So you were on the right track, just didn't quite go far enough. All right, let's see here. Thank you. You're welcome, I know. Such a shame to be so close and yet. All right, I felt bad for you. Okay, now. Some of you may recall that a couple class days ago, I think it was when we were doing section 7.4, I went off on this wild tangent and then all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, this is not now, this is later. I've been doing that prop, the same problems for Math 85, that's my excuse, but anyway, today we're finally gonna deal with solving equations that have fractions. The big thing in this chapter is the least common denominator. We've taken adding or subtracting fractions that had different denominators, found the LCD, built each fraction to that, et cetera, et cetera. We just got through taking complex fractions and multiplying them by the LCD over the LCD. Now we're going to take equations that have fractions and multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator in order to get rid of the denominators, clear out the fractions. Okay. So first of all, we have this problem, which says two, ah, that's not what I want. I want this pen. Two thirds equals one half plus X over six. So we have an equation that contains fractions. The LCD would be what? Anybody? Well, it's six. Six. Good job. Good job. Okay. So now we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by six. Okay. So we get, let's see, 
six times two thirds, the six over three would reduce to two over one. So four equals six times one half, six over two is three over one. So equals three plus six times X over six, the sixes would reduce. So we get four equals three plus X. Uh, Miss, I kind of went a little too fast and I kind of- Okay, a problem. Hang on a second. I'm trying to change my window so that I can see what goes here. Okay, we're gonna go over this problem again. I hear your, your cry for mercy. Okay. So we've got two thirds equals one half plus X over six. Are you okay with how I found the least common denominator? Is that? Yeah. All right, good. Okay. So now we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by six. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to distribute the six. So I'm going to have six times two thirds equals six times one half plus six times X over six. Are you okay with that? Yeah. All right. So going back and reducing six over three is two over one. So I have two times two, which is four over one, which gives us four equals. Six times a half reduces to three over one. Three times one is three, all over one is still three. And finally, six times X over six, the X is reduced to one over one and I have plus X. Okay with that? Yeah, thank you. Uh, not a problem. Again, anytime you're feeling overwhelmed or whatever, say, hey, whoa, slow down. Huh? You know, I'm not going anywhere, so. All right, next, we're going to isolate the variable term. So I get one equals X, which is gonna be my final answer. Any questions about that? Okay, basically that's pretty much what we're gonna look at. Only things are gonna look worse, but it's gonna be the same kind of ideas. How about this one? Let's see here. Um, one fourth minus five sixths equals one over a. The least common denominator now would be 12 a. Any questions about where I came up with 12a? All right. So now I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 12a. So we're going to get 12a times 1 fourth minus 12a times 5 sixths equals 12a times 1 over a. Going across and reducing, 12 over 4 is 3 over 1. So I get 3a minus. 12 over six is two over one. Two times a times five is 10a. All over one is still 10a. 12a times one over a, the a's reduced down to one over one and I have 12. Any questions there? All 
right? On the left side of the equation, combining like terms, 3a minus 10a is negative 7a, which equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 7. Question? Yeah, if we wanted to, could we do 10a minus 3a, or would it have to be in the order that it's... Well, if you went 10a minus 3a, you'd get 7a, which would be incorrect, because it's negative 7a. Oh, OK. Yeah, subtraction is not commutative. If it was oh, 3a plus, you could do it. But yeah, subtraction is not commutative, OK? OK. All right, so then you get a equals negative 12 sevenths. So there's your final answer. OK, sorry about that. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, hang on. Sorry, my screen is still messed up, and I'm trying to get it to, to show me what I want. And it's not doing that. Oh, well. Line, line, line. OK. Next problem. How about this one? Let's see. We've got 10 divided by t minus t equals 3. So what's the least common denominator here? T. Correct. T. So we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by T. On the left side, we get T times 10 over T minus T times T equals t times 3. OK. Going back and simplifying, here the t's reduce out, and we get 10 minus t squared equals 3t. Uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. what, um, how come we don't cancel out the t's? Right here? Yeah. Because they're both in the numerator. Oh, OK. Yeah, see here, this t was in the denominator, so those reduce out. But these. Oh, t's, OK. It's, I'm sorry. It's, all, it's all about what they say about real estate, location, location, location. OK? <laughs> all right. So now I have a second degree equation. So let's go back to chapter 6 and solve a second degree equation by factoring. Well, my leading term would be negative t squared, but I don't want it to be negative. So you know what? I'm gonna shove everything over to the other side of the equation. So I'm gonna add t squared to both sides and subtract 10 from both sides. So now I have zero equals t squared plus three t minus 10. Now I'm going to come back and factor. So I get a t and a t and a, how about a plus 5 and a minus 2? That would give me plus 3t and minus 10. Then I'm going to take each factor that contains a variable and set it equal to 0 and solve it. So the first equation, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides and get negative 5. The second equation, I'm going to add 2 to both sides and get t equals 2. Let's check our work. I'm going to take this original equation, 10 over t minus t equals 3. And I'm going to check, let's see, we had t equals negative 5 and t equals 2. Let's check our work. Are you, is everybody done looking at this page? Yeah. Okay. So if t is negative 5, I get 10 over negative 5 minus negative 5 equals 3. This would be what? Negative 2 
plus five equals three, three equals three. So that one checks. If I had t equals two, I'd get 10 over two minus two equals three, five minus, oops, five minus two. equals three, three equals three. So that one checks as well. So we had two correct solutions for that equation. Alrighty, how about this one? Okay, just a second here. Put that over there. We have x divided by x minus 5 equals 3 plus x divided by, whoops, x minus 5. OK, so what's the LCD? x minus 5. Correct, x minus five. So we're gonna multiply this side by x minus five and this side by x minus five. So distributing, I get x minus five times x over x minus five equals x minus five times three plus x minus five times x over x minus five. Okay. Any questions there? So let's go back and Simplify, so multiplying these, the x minus five on top and the x minus five on the bottom reduce out, we have x left. On the right side of the equal sign, we have three x minus 15 plus here, the x minus fives and the x minus fives reduce out and we have plus x, okay? Any questions so far? All right. Simplifying on the right side of the equation, 4x, combining like terms, that is 4x minus 15. I'm going to go ahead and put all the x's on the left side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, which will give me negative 3x equals negative 15. Then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3, and I get x equals 5. Any questions? Does anybody see any problem with our answer? Uh... See what? Let's check our work. All right. So let's rewrite the equation. X over X minus five equals three plus X over X minus five. And we came up with X equals five. All right. So let's plug that in. Let's see right there and right there and right there and right there. And I get this. Seeing any problems yet? Yeah. Zeros in the denominator. Yeah. What, what happens when you divide by zero? You get zero. No. Undefined. Undefined. Yeah. It's all fun and games till you divide by zero. So x equals five does not work. No. solution.
which is why you always want to check your work. And even if you're positive it's correct, you should at least plug your values into the denominators to make sure it doesn't produce a zero in the denominator, making it undefined. Okay. Ready to go on? Okay. New problem. X plus six over X plus four, oops, plus one over X squared plus X minus 12 equals one. All right, in order to find the least common denominator, I'm gonna to have to factor each denominator. The first denominator, X plus four is just fine the way it is. The second denominator, x squared plus x minus 12 could be factored into x plus 4 x minus 3. Okay, so now we'll just go with the factored form of the denominator. So what's my LCD? x plus 4 and x minus 3. Excellent x plus four, x minus three. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply all of that by x plus four times x minus three, and all of that by x plus four times x minus three. Okay, so we're doing the same thing we've been doing on all the problems, it's just that now the LCD is kind of ugly and big, and so got a lot to drag around. Okay, so I've got x plus four times x minus three times x plus six over x plus four. Okay, plus x plus four times x minus three times one over x plus four times x minus three equals one times x plus four times x minus three. So do you see how we distributed the x plus four times x minus three to every term? All right, we good to go on? So now the X plus fours are gonna reduce out, giving us X minus three times X plus six, which is going to be X squared plus six X minus three X minus 18 which is x squared plus 3x minus 18, okay? Plus here, the x plus fours and the x minus threes are gonna reduce out and all that we have left is plus one. On the right side of the equation, one times anything is anything, so we can kind of ignore the one. And then we get what? X squared minus 3X plus 4X minus 12, which is X squared plus X minus 12, combining like terms, okay? And I can do a little bit more of combining like terms there. X squared plus 3X minus 17 equals X squared plus X minus 12, okay? Now, this at this point is a second degree equation, but let's say I decide to put all the, the put everything on the left. So I start out by subtracting x squared from both sides. Well, wait a minute. Now it's no longer a second degree equation. 
So now my strategy changes. I'm gonna put all the X's on the left and the constants on the right, okay? So I'm gonna subtract X from both sides, which is going to give me two X minus 17 equals negative 12. I'm going to add 17 to both sides. 2x equals 5. Divide by 2, and I get x equals 5 halves. Let's see. x equals 5 halves. Well, now, again, two forms of checking your work. No matter how correct you think you are, you should always at least check the denominators. If x is 5 halves, will I be in trouble there or here or here? No. If x was negative 4, I'd be in trouble there. Negative 4 or positive 3, I'd be in trouble there, OK? Because that would make the denominator 0. The whole thing would be undefined, and that potential solution would not be correct. But 5 halves does not do that. So. Does anybody want me to go back and check five halves in the entire equation? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Let's see here. Let me find where I got that. Uh, right there. Okay. So we've got x plus six over x plus four plus one over x squared plus x minus 12 equals one. And we had x equals five halves. Okay, here we go. So every place x appeared, we're gonna put five halves. So we're gonna get five halves plus six over five halves plus four plus one over five halves squared plus five halves minus 12 equals one. Let's put parentheses there as well, okay? Now, hmm, let's see here. Five, let's take this a piece at a time. Five halves plus six would be five halves plus six over one. A common denominator would be two. So I'd have to multiply six by two over two, so I'm gonna get 17 halves. We okay so far? All right, let's take this one. Five halves plus four is like five halves plus four over one. Common denominator is still two. I'll take four over one and multiply it by two over two, so I get eight over two which is 13 over two. Okay. Five halves squared is what? 25 fourths plus five halves minus 12. Okay. Okay, still with me? <laughs> okay, let's see, let's take this and deal with it. That would be 25 fourths plus how many fourths minus how many fourths? I'm gonna take five halves times two over two, which is 10 fourths, minus 12 over one times four over four, which is minus 48 fourths, wow. 25 plus 10 is 35. 35 minus 48 would be negative 13 fourths. So, boy, so what have I got? I've got 17 halves over 13 halves uh, plus one over negative 13 fourths equals one. Well, here's hoping. Let's see what happens. Did I make any mistakes there copying things? 25, 10, minus 48, 35. I think we're okay. 
Well, this 17 halves divided by 13 halves is 17 halves times 2 thirteenths is 17 thirteenths. Plus, 1 divided by negative 13 fourths is 1 times negative 13 fourths. Oh, excuse me, wrong, is 1 times negative 4 thirteenths. So plus negative 4 thirteenths equals 1. What's 17 plus negative 4? 13 thirteenths, 1 equals 1. <laughs> After all that, let's see. It checks. It took just as long to check your work as it did to get the answer, didn't it? Well, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but if I'm going to cross a bridge, I'd be happy to know that the engineers that built it checked their calculations before I drove across it. Just saying. Okay. That was fun. Fun for whom, you say? All right. Now, let's see here. Ah. We're going to solve a formula for the specified variable. Okay. Something I want to remind you of, if I haven't already, uh, when you're dealing with WebAssign, if you're given a letter that's a variable and it's a capital T, for instance, in the answer, if you change it to a small t, it's going to be marked wrong. Okay. If it's a capital letter, keep it a capital letter. If it's a lowercase letter, keep it a lowercase letter. Sometimes formulas will have a capital A and a lowercase a in the same formula, and they stand for different things. So you've got to be careful of that. I just corrected some math 85 tests where they did some things like what we're going to be doing. A lot of wrong answers. They had the right letters, but they didn't have the right form of the letter. So be careful of that. Okay, how about this one? T equals 3R over M minus N. And we are to solve for R, okay? So I could clear the fraction by multiplying both sides times M minus N. On the right, these would reduce out and I would have M minus N times T equals 3R. Then I could divide both sides by 3, and R would equal M minus N times T, all divided by 3. Any questions on that one? All righty. Let's take a look at another example. Capital S divided by K plus H equals capital E. Solve for K. Well, K is in the denominator, and I need to not only get it by itself, but it needs to be in the numerator. So again, let's clear the fractions. Fraction by multiplying both sides by the, let's see, is that a H? That's an H by K plus H. All right. On the left side, those would reduce out, and I have S equals E times K plus H. Well, so then I try and, I'm trying to get K by itself. The question is, do I want to distribute or not? And I could do it either way. Let's not distribute. What would I do next? I divide both sides by E, okay? So S divided by E equals K plus H. Then I would subtract, oops, subtract H from both sides. And I would have S divided by E minus H equals K. Now notice that H is not being divided by E because I had S over E minus H. It was a whole separate term, minus H, okay? So there is one form of an answer. We okay with that or do you want me to go back and distribute and see what happens? No one cares, all right. Next example, two over C 
plus two over D equals one over H solve for C. Well, again, in this section, we've been emphasizing clearing the fractions. So let's do that. Let's multiply both sides by the LCD, which is C D H. Okay. So on the left, I get C D H times. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Where did you where did you get the H from? In the LCD. Or. Okay. So. Oh, okay. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, because it was it was in the original problem. Okay. So there plus that equals that. Okay. So now the C's reduce out the D's reduce out and the H's reduce out, giving me 2DH plus 2CH equals CD. Now, I'm still trying to solve for C. Let's get all the terms with the variable, as in C, on both sides of the equation. So I'm going to subtract 2CH from both sides. So we get 2DH equals CD minus 2CH. Now comes the tricky part. I need to get C by itself. Can we divide by two C two D negative two DH? Well, we could do that, but we'd have to divide each thing by negative two. What did you say? Oh, negative two DH, negative two DH, negative two DH. Which would give you what negative one equals uh, C over negative two H plus C over D. So that wouldn't really get C by itself. I mean, that was a, that was a good idea, but can you see that it's not gonna accomplish what we need? Yeah. Okay. So here's the secret move. We are going to factor out the C. And then divide both sides by what's left. See what we just did there? You want me to go through that again? Uh, no, I'm just trying to, my brain is still processing what you did. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, so, so what I did is I factored the C out of both of those terms. So then I had C times a bunch of stuff, divide both sides by the bunch of stuff, and we've isolated C. Oh, okay. I see. I see, she says. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. We okay with that? Anybody? Other questions on that one? Okay. Uh, let's look at a different one. One over A minus one over B equals one. We're going to solve for B. So again, let's clear the fractions. 
by multiplying both sides by the LCD, which is A times B. So distributing, I get A times B times one over A minus A times B times one over B equals AB times one. Going back and simplifying, the A's reduce down, the B's reduce down, and I have B minus A equals A times B times one is AB. Can we add A to both sides? Sure, you can do that. Why would you do that? To get B by itself. Ah, but you see there's a B over here as well. Oh, okay. I mean, we could do that, but, but. How about if we do this? Let's subtract B from both sides. So now I get negative A equals AB minus B. We could factor B out of both sides. And then divide both sides by A minus one. So negative A over A minus one equals B. This was just like the last problem, only there were only two variables instead of three. Where did you get the one from? This one, this right here? Mm -hmm. You've got A, B minus B and you factor out a B. Remember Hansel and Gretel? Gotta have a way to get back there. Okay. All right. Trail of breadcrumbs, whatever. How are we doing? Okay. All righty. Let's take a look at. Let's see how we're doing for time. Okay. How about this one? PC over S equals T over R. And we are to solve for C. Well, I could multiply both sides by what? I suppose I can SR. multiply by, by SR. I can do that. And then reduce. Let's see, that would get rid of the S's over there and the R's over there. So then I'd have what uh, <laughs> CPR equals ST. I just put things in alphabetical order. Okay, now what? Do we factor out the C? Well, sure. So we could write it as C times PR. What are you gonna do now? Divide by PR? Yeah, in fact, we could do that just right here, All right? So C equals S T over P R. Oops, I changed the cases of my R there. Okay. Now I'm gonna go back and do that problem a lot quicker, but I wanted to do it this way first to show that, yeah, it works. But what about this? What about, let's recopy the problem. PC over S equals T over R. We're to solve for P. Let me ask you this. What's the coefficient of P? C. One. Oh. 
So, well, maybe think outside the box a little bit. Isn't everything being multiplied by or divided by P, sort of the coefficient? Let, let me ask you this. What if I had 2 thirds P equals 12? What's the coefficient of P? 2 thirds. What if I had 2P over 3 equals 12? What's the coefficient of P? 3. Two over three. Two thirds. What if I had P times two over three equals 12? What's the coefficient of P? Two thirds. Okay. What if I had P or X times P over three equals seven? What's the coefficient of P? X, so X over three. Ah, what's the coefficient of P? C over S. Okay. So that's a fraction, right? C over S. So let's multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And what do we get? Uh, whoops. All right. What did I do here? Oh, this is supposed to be a P. I went too fast. My bad. My bad. Yes. <laughs> Hang on here. My brain's not as, as advanced as yours. Sorry, what? My brain's not as advanced as you are. <laughs> okay, what did I do here? Wait, I are have... we solving? we're solving for P, aren't we? Yeah, I've messed myself up here trying to trying to show you a fancy way of doing it. Would it be C over S? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me go back to the original problem, which was P C over S equals T over R. Okay. The coefficient of Oh, I'm supposed to solve for C. Mm -hmm. I wrote P up there. So the coefficient of C could be thought of as P over S because all of that represents numbers, even though they're variables, right? So we could multiply both sides by S over P. What would that give me? The P's would reduce, the S's would reduce, and I'd have what? S C over PR, okay? In other words, I could do it all in one step, though I screwed it up royally. So now you're all thinking, oh, why would you want to do that? But <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway, okay. So tonight, you're dealing with equations. Find the least common denominator. Multiply each term in both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. As you go through and distribute, you'll reduce out all the, all the original denominators. When you get an answer, check your work, make sure that it doesn't at least turn the denominator into undefined, into zero. If it does, you gotta throw that out, it's not a solution. It's possible to come up with a couple of solutions where one works and one doesn't. So if you don't check your work in the whole thing, like we did that one problem that took forever, at least check it in the denominators. And then solving formulas as we did here, okay? Ah, I do have one more problem I wanna look at. And then I will let you go. So here's the way I like to describe these. This first, let's call this part part A and part B. I like to describe A like this, okay? And part B is like this. What is this? Can you tell me what this is? Well, what's this? Nobody wants to play my game, huh? All right. This is the sound of one hand clapping. This is two hands. How is this like A, but this is like B? Because 
B is actually like a full equation with an equal sign? Correct. Here, we don't have both sides of an equation. It's not an equation. We just have one expression. The common mistake is for people to take this and say, oh, I'm going to multiply by 15. Well, yes, over here with an equation, because you have both sides, you can multiply both sides by 15. But over here, you can't do that. What you've got to do is just build everything up to where it has the same common denominator, OK? So if there's no equal sign, you can't multiply both sides because you don't have both sides. You got it? We'll see. All right. I will see you tomorrow, if not this afternoon. Let me find a mouse here. Stop the recording.